Ladies and gentlemen, open banking pioneers, how are you all doing? It's uh, another month in lockdown, and uh, I feel it's even more important to keep our community connected. And what better way to, to talk um, together and, and shine a light on the absolutely amazing response that our OBE heroes have had to COVID-19. They didn't miss a beat in responding, and it's our pleasure to shine a light on all the good that they are doing. Now, I've seen the registration figures for this session. Thank you. It's absolutely phenomenal. And if Tatiana and I are truly honest, it's very humbling too. So please, let me start by thanking the men behind this live streaming session. Martin and his team, when they're not helping us out, they're actually hosting sessions around the world for COVID-19 lab technicians. And then of course, Jeff from Blue Train, who edits the highlights, which means that Monica in New Zealand, when she emailed me this morning, it means that she can actually watch those highlights rather than staying up till 3 a.m. So she gets her beauty sleep and she can also be part of this important conversation. Now, we always welcome engagement from our audience. So please, to help us shape this conversation, we'd like you to, to ask questions using the Slido panel that you can see at the side of your screen. And we'd also like you to take part in the interactive poll. Now, the question that we're asking during this session was actually inspired by Molly from Token. Now, our guest host is David Breer from 11FS. No doubt you'll all be familiar with him, um, keeping you company on his breakfast show in the morning at half past eight. David will be asking the panel those questions. So please don't be shy. Please do take part. Now, as always, on your screen, you can also see Karina, who's graphically recording our session. She's actually got a little bit of a competition at the moment from Rupert H4, who set the benchmark for talent with his beautiful, beautiful rainbow that you, you'll all be able to see. Now, I've actually got used to uh, seeing Tatiana's son during lockdown, and no doubt a lot of you are familiar with, with that as well. So it's nice to be able to showcase and shine a light on some of his talent too. A huge thank you to our sponsors, and your support means a huge amount to us. So thank you to MasterCard, to Token, to Trulayer for your generosity. The conversation we're having now has already started around the great response the open banking community has had to COVID-19. This live stream is an opportunity to keep that conversation going and to show the breadth of response. So we have a wide panel of, of some of the industry greats here. Many would say the crisis has accelerated a lot of change and it's propelled FinTech for good. And, and that's really because we're agile, we're nimble, it's in our DNA and we've been able to respond rapidly. So what we're actually talking about is the pace that we've been able to respond. So some real life stuff here, it's always got to be use case driven. So we're talking about helping, make, helping people make payments. We're talking around getting paid new, using new cost-effective payment types. And we're talking about distributing government aid to where it's needed quickly, to the sick, to the elderly, to the vulnerable, and to those self-isolating. We're also looking at the response to the, for the self-employed workers um, and those that are losing income through, um, through COVID-19 and, and lockdown and how they can apply for government loans and, and, and talking to the HMRC. And finally, we're going to be looking at how we can deliver aid and support to those care workers and, and other, other people in the community that need it very, very quickly too. The list goes on, the need is great, and, and so is our impact, to be perfectly frank. So what I'd like to do now is to start by asking each of our panelists what they did BC. So a quick virtual round the table. And Todd, I'd love you to lead. If you could kick off with um, your backstory, please. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Helen and Tatiana. And thank you guys for all that you're doing during this time. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Todd Clyde. I'm the CEO of Token. I'm self-isolating here in lovely Northwest London. Um, before the COVID crisis, I mean, Token was bringing cheaper payments to merchants and enabling new payments propositions for PSPs. 
So basically, Token uses open banking APIs to create a pan-European payment system that processes payments over the bank rails instead of card rails. So our mission has always been to really advance the future of payments by putting a bank in every app. Um, so that's a quick introduction myself, and thanks again, Helen, and I'll kind of walk in on the next round. Thank you, Todd. Over to you, Nigel. And first of all, thank, um, congratulations for closing your funding round. Oh, thank you. We'll thank Visa. <laughs> it was them who wrote the check. So, uh, the, uh, my name's Nigel Verdon, and uh, I'm CEO and co-founder of Rails Bank. Uh, many thanks again to the whole OBE team and, and uh, Helen and, and Tatiana for making all this happen. Uh, and my pre-COVID, I was uh, living in Singapore and uh, leading Rails Bank. And Rails Bank, uh, as our belief is, we're, we're banking as a service platform that will enable any business to be a fintech. Uh, we're live across Europe, Southeast Asia, and about to go live in the, in, in the US. So we're the only global banking service platform. Uh, but now I'm locked down in France uh, because I failed to escape France before we and the lockdown to go back to Singapore. So uh, I'm the I'm same time zone as you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Um, and, and moving on around this virtual table, um, Freddie from Credit Kudos. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yep, my name is, is Freddie Kelly. I'm CEO and co-founder of Credit Kudos. Uh, credit Kudos is a credit reference agency that's building new and innovative credit score systems backed by open banking data. Uh, prior to, to coronavirus, I, I was working in our, in our East London office um, and I'm now uh, now isolated with a slightly longer beard in my North London, uh, North London home. Thank you. Simon, funding options, over to you. Hey there. Uh, thanks also again to uh, Helen and Tatiana for the opportunity to come onto the panel. Um, so funding options, my name is Simon Curis and I'm the CEO of Funding Options and we are Europe's leading marketplace uh, for SME lending or for business lending. Uh, so we serve uh, businesses in the UK and the Netherlands uh, and we've recently entered into a partnership uh, with more than 20 lenders to utilize uh, open banking data to improve the core facet of, of our process. Uh, prior to COVID-19 hitting, I was actually self-isolating with flu uh, about six weeks ago. So I predated the lockdown. Uh, I think I'm in week seven now. Um, but I'm instead of being in Shoreditch, I'm in uh, sunny Royal Tunbridge Wells. And I'm continuing the beer theme from Freddie. <laughs> Francesco, it's, I'm delighted that you um, are able to join the panel. It, it's a first um, for you, so please, would you would you share what the, some of the amazing stuff that that you do, um, BC, or you did BC rather? Hello, hi everyone. Good evening. Uh, thanks, Helen, for uh, inviting me on on this panel, and um, very honored to be with with such a great audience and 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 some amazing peers actually from from the industry. So um, what I do, I, I'm the CEO and co-founder of TrueLayer. We are a startup business based in London. Uh, what we do, we build uh, an open banking platform. That means creating easy access for developers to access global open banking infrastructure in different parts of the world. And that in, in practical terms mean enabling those developers to build uh, applications that are empowered by banks' data and capable of uh, making bank payments. Um, what we really care about is to foster innovation in financial technology and eventually enable consumers to get the best out of financial innovation. Thank you. And you very generously um, um, have brought along uh, one of your, your customers, uh, Coconut. So Sam, this is your opportunity just to say a few words around Coconut and then we can talk more around the, the COVID-19 response from you in a, in a while. Great. Thanks very much for having me. Um, Sam O'Connor, CEO of Coconut. And we're making self-employment easier than being employed um, by building the ultimate accounting and tax tool for self-employed people. So you can connect Coconut to 20 different banks through our uh, awesome partner, TrueLayer, uh, and get cracking with your accounting and tax. Um, we've got 23,000 customers and uh, we're putting our expertise around self-employment into supporting uh, with uh, a campaign we've launched uh, for self-employed income support and I'll share more about that later. Superb, thank you. 
So the world as we know has changed overnight and, and following the same order that we've just had, now is the time to actually go a little deeper and talk more around the amazing responses everybody has had to COVID-19. So Todd, I'd love you to lead on that one again, please. Uh, sure, and, and maybe I'll share a little bit of uh, backstory here on kind of when the severity of this crisis hit us and kind of what caused us to take action. Uh, there was actually two things. So probably three weeks ago, we heard from one of our employees that a colleague had passed away from the virus. And about two weeks ago, um, we heard from one of our customers that a family member had passed away from the virus. So that really made it real. Um, and the second was I was in a call with portfolio company CEOs of one of our investors. And there was probably three or four CEOs on that call who were facing the real um, possibility of laying off half their company. And uh, so just realizing the severity um, uh, of this environment and how it's hitting some companies. And then so we wanted to try to figure out what we could do to help during the solution. So um, late March, we, I asked a team to assemble and try to kind of figure out what actions we can take. And we defined solutions for governments, for charities, and, and for businesses. Um, first, for governments, in, in late March, we reached out to the UK government to offer our assistance in the income protection program uh, for furloughed workers. Um, we're already an authorized supplier for uh, Crown Commercial Services and believe that we could help very quickly with the disbursement of these benefits. And happy to go into the ways how. But um, the second thing was in charity. So, you know, there's many of my peers here that, that have done the same, um, but we're removing all fees for charitable organizations who want to use our services to receive donations. And we're proactively reaching out to a number of those that could benefit from this offer. Um, Thursday, we're trying to figure out how can we help businesses uh, who want to help their consumers. So we're reaching out to direct billers who are looking to give their customers greater flexibility over their payments and, and greater ability to manage their cash flow at the moment. And so we're offering a request to pay capability to these direct billers for the remainder of the year uh, at no charge. And so that's that's kind of the backstory. You know, we feel very blessed that that um, we are less impacted than other companies and less impacted than other industry segments. Um, but there's been a few actions that have made it hit home and uh, definitely have wanted to try to uh, contribute some solutions for the market. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Nigel, we've, um, we've helped support Lightning Aid. It would be great if you could just talk more about that and the impact, the great impact it's having, please. Sure. Uh, one of our, again, the backstory, while we're all on backstories, is uh, one of our employees Ren, uh, who's from Singapore, who's now based in London. She used to work in the financial inclusion uh, world in Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, uh, for a company called Abima, which is a microinsurance uh, business before joining Wells Bank. And uh, one of, she was in discussions with some other colleagues in, in London about the how it was so difficult to get funds fast to the right people in a timely manner. Uh, to support people who need a financial aid or financial help uh, on basics of things like getting their shopping, uh, uh, and etc. So a couple of the team uh, in our growth team, which has a mandate of do crazy things, uh, they got together and they built uh, from the ground up uh, within eight days and launched it and, and live on the, the App Store, the Apple App Store, uh, a uh, what we call lightning aid and the purpose of lightning aid is to get funds in people's uh, account so they open a lightning aid account that uh, they can then spend immediately using a virtual debit card or a real debit card so we had all that built in eight days and I think that shows the power of Wells Bank a little shout out there but more importantly the power of able to respond to get uh, funds to people quickly because uh, when you talk to the government it's June and so we're engaging with them to say, let's bring June into into April. So what Lightning Aid really is, is, is a simple neobank uh, with a, a super easy onboarding capability. And the uniqueness of it is we tie together the bank account, uh, the UTR, the tax number or the TIN number, uh, the national insurance number, et cetera, and all the other identity pieces. So you know the person receiving the aid is the right person receiving the aid. Uh, so you, you massively reduce the fraud. So I've got it piloted at the moment uh, with some charities uh, down in, in Southwark where that's working quite nicely and volunteers uh, are signing up for Lightning Aid to be able to help out people in need. 
uh, we have uh, just signed up um, the uh, the part of the music industry. A very old friend of mine uh, represents uh, about twenty five percent of the music industry in the UK. And a, uh, if you're not touring, uh, all the roadies, all the guys who do all the hard work of of humping stuff, setting up lighting, setting up uh, sound, etc., they're out of work because all contractors. Uh, so uh, a, one of his colleagues has put his own personal money in uh, uh, to start supporting these guys, and so they're getting Lightning Aid accounts so they can receive the support directly uh, ahead of government aid coming in to, to help them. So it was a success story built by literally three or four people uh, with super helpful, a company called, a shout out to a company called Tokyo, who's one of our partners who do front ends. They, the ability to, to, to launch that was, was done super fast. Apple had it approved and up as a financial services app uh, on the app store in two days, which is amazing. So I think it's, a, it's a shown that as an ecosystem, everybody has realized we put competition aside, we put due pro too much process aside, and we can make things happen. And thinking for the future is why can't Apple just do that every day? Why can't we do that every day? <laughs> why can't all of us work with a sense of urgency and pace uh, that uh, that this is an endeavored on us? Uh, so hopefully, as, as this thing grows, uh, the, there'll be a lot more people who, can, who don't have to worry about uh, where's my money. Uh, and charities can help directly at massively uh, uh, sort of near zero cost uh, to distribute. And, and if you look at it from a just metrics perspective, one of the big issues with charities is for one pound in, uh, is it 15 pence or 80 pence gets out the other end of it to, to the real person in need. This is almost one pound in is one pound out. Uh, so uh, that's where we are. Brilliant backstory. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh... You really did move at pace there. Freddie, you were one of the first um, out of the blocks, um, supported by 11FS, so a little bit of a shout out for you there, David, and Fronted. I'd love you to share more about your backstory, please, and how you're using open banking to accelerate the lending process. Absolutely. So, I mean, we're a, a credit reference agency that's uh, trying to help people understand credit worthiness. So, you know, we, we don't manufacture... PPE or, or develop vaccination, so it, it might be not be obvious how we how we're sort of able to support in in this environment. Um, COVID credit was a, a project dreamt up, as you say, by Simon Taylor at Eleven FS. Well, at least uh, it was his fault <laughs> that this this kind of uh, unwound in the way it did. Um, he, he sort of commenting on the uh, the lack of, of uh, adequate remedies for self employed or or freelance workers. Um, put out a tweet saying, you know. I think we could fix this with, with fintech and then uh, fronted um, one of our clients sort of quickly chimed in and said, you know, we, we could build this in a weekend. Um, and, and before, before we knew it, that's what we were doing uh, a couple of weeks ago. And this was, I should say, prior to, to the announcement um, by Rishi Sunak of, of any further measures that, that were sort of targeted at the, the self-employed. So we had the hypothesis that um, one of the real challenges that, that in sort of providing proportionate, uh, help to those people um, and, and a little bit uh, similar to sort of what uh, Nigel was picking up on just there is is that you know there's a, there's a high instance of, of fraud and it's very difficult to understand you know um, the different circumstances of, of individuals and how they've been affected and, and make sure you can validate that and at, at scale and, and at the speed that we need to deliver uh, the the money to make a real difference uh, and we we saw open banking as being a a massive uh, enabler to being able to solve that problem and so set about building a tool that could demonstrate that capability uh, and, and very simply we were allowing individuals to, to contribute their basic tax UTR uh, national insurance information and then also using open banking uh, validate the the income that they had previously been uh, receiving and, and how that had been affected by the coronavirus outbreak uh, and the goal was that we would then use that uh, as a way to validate any kind of claim for a government remedy. And, and that's taken it forward now to conversations with you know, HMRC, HMT, and the FCA uh, to demonstrate how this, this could be integrated, uh, again, with, with the goal of sort of bringing forward the current June expectation to, to something a bit more soon uh, so that you know, uh, we can sort of save a few businesses through giving them the adequate liquidity that they need. Superb, thank you. Again, just showing how that um, the fintechs have, have moved very agilely 
and, and nimbly and, and really moved at pace to, to all of the points that I'm making. So um, thank you. Um, Simon, you have an amazing consortium of lenders. And as we head into recession, boy, are you going to be busy? I would love to hear more around um, your COVID-19 response, please. Sure. So um, by virtue of what we do at Funding Options, uh, it's fair to say that we found ourselves uh, at the epicenter uh, of the economic fallout post lockdown. Um, so at Funding Options, we help SMEs gain access to funding quite simply. So we sit between the businesses uh, and the lender panel of, sort of 200 plus covering all of the banks, the NEOs, the challenges, uh, and then all of the alternative lenders. So the biggest issue for us was how do we cope with the demand? Um, and to give an idea of some of the stats, in March alone, we saw more than a billion pounds worth of loan applications by cumulative value uh, pass through funding options, which is about 500% up on any month previous. So the demand that we saw was absolutely stratospheric. Post the announcements, uh, I think it's fair to say also that there was a lot of confusion um, you know, some, some very positive announcements from the government, but a lack of clarity around how would that be distributed. So the biggest challenge for us is how do we cope with that demand and where do we place that demand? And so there became a, a very obvious need for um, a common infrastructure. And that's the role that uh, open banking effectively plays, because open banking clearly gives, uh, gives us the ability to uh, pull digitally uh, bank transaction information uh, from a business and then channel that information digitally to lenders. So essentially it's about how do we give our lender panel the, uh, the quickest opportunity to efficiently evaluate whether the applications that we were sending their way are viable for their proposition and are viable overall. So that's, that, that's the approach that we took um, and we agreed a partnership initially with 20 lenders but that has already grown uh, since announcement, and we think that will grow to uh, the majority of our panel, hopefully within a very short space of time. Um, so, so the efficiency that we've seen and the take up from customers is fantastic, and certainly the response from lenders, again, has been equally positive. Wow, thank you. I really do think you're going to get busier and busier. Um, Francesco, you've shown a... Um, an amazing collaborative approach to your COVID-19 response. I'd love you to share a little more, please. Sure. And, and I think like the right, the right word is uh, collaboration. And, and for one single reason, what, what, what I notice is that right now we, ha we have um, a health crisis and an economic crisis, right? And to tackle both of them, what, what, what really happened is that the best bright minds in the world are actually working together to try to solve uh, those problems at the same time. And, and I believe that technology has a very huge role to play. And this is for two different reasons. One is that uh, there is a real impediment right now to do anything in person, anything that um, requires uh, uh, in-person interaction. The second, the second problem is that we uh, there, there is a huge need of a prompt delivery, a prompt response, and being able to target those sides to the right business, the right person, to the right circumstances. And this is where technology, this is where uh, financial technology, this is where open banking can really shine. And this is where we as a business, we thought, okay, we can have a pretty big um, and, and meaningful impact. Therefore, what, what, we, what we started to think uh, was ways to um, actually uh, enable this innovation, enable um, our partners, our friends to build and develop solutions that could actually uh, target those health to the people that are most in need. And so the first thing that we have done uh, it, it is actually quite straightforward, but uh, it, it actually helped us to catalyze the attention and and, and create this sort of um, a dialogue with, with, with different partners was to slash and remove all the fees to uh, access our, our, our open banking platform. So, so effectively enable developers, enable uh, our, our customers that we're developing solution for responding to COVID-19 to being able to do that in a, in a very fast streamlined fashion, removing bureaucracy, 
removing as much as possible any sort of onboarding step and really, really get to develop things together. And, and in this spirit of joining alliances and, and, and building partnership, we, we end up uh, partnering quite closely with, with Sam uh, from, from Coconut uh, and, 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 and his team uh, to develop um, a, a tool for, for helping like self-employee to actually um, uh, receive some of those benefits that the government is putting in place. And Sam is gonna, is gonna um, tell you more about uh, the way uh, we end up building this, this tool and, and what are, are, are the plans around uh, this tool. But this is for me uh, a very interesting moment where uh, for, I would say the first time we see that uh, we are not just creating technology that is helping a customer to be successful and their consumers to be successful, but really making a dent in, in uh, a moment where there's huge need of help, huge need of solidarity, and huge need of uh, being all together and solve problems all together. Uh, the third bit that we are doing is to also leverage our payment infrastructure to uh, deliver those targeted ads to uh, um, people in needs and very specifically to charities and to the NHS. So we are developing a platform for facilitating donations, um, of course, like without, without fees and, and in the, the most open possible way and, and helping those charities to eventually uh, deliver uh, the help uh, to, the, to the right place, the right, um, the, the right person. Um, in the long run, I think we, we absolutely have um, a responsibility, I think as an industry, uh, to help uh, using this technology and, and deliver and help delivering those targeted uh, help um, in, a, in a timely and prompt fashion um, and, and really help saving companies and help saving financially individuals that, that are in need. Um, th this is, I think, like the, the biggest contribution that uh, the industry of open banking can really do and is really helping this targeting focus. Superb, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that. Sam, you're, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful lead in for you to share a, a little more around what you're doing at Coconut, please. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I'd say this is against the backdrop of a really dire situation for businesses. I mean, it's, it, the industry's moved fast to support them, but, but we've seen some of our customers have 100% uh, of their income drop off. And so there's uh, like a real need for support here. And the first thing that we realized actually was it's easy to kind of jump in with, um, with solutions, but actually the first point that we wanted to make was that the government announced support. And my, uh, my context here is self-employed people who I think of as sole traders and individuals running businesses, so kind of contractors. And the, the government, um, they announced their support for, for self-employed people. But the first thing we realized was there were some massive gaps in that support. Um, and so we pulled together the industry players, uh, Truelair, some others, Shield Pay, uh, the, the Creative Industries Federation, um, uh, Penfold, Huckstree. I mean, you know, th there's a lot of people in there, Freelance Club. And, and we, we focused in on these uh, sort of three campaign points, really, which were the current support for self-employed people is focused on the tax returns submitted in the year 2018-19, so the tax year end ending 5th of April, um, which means that many people who started self-employment in the last 24 months are left out. Secondly, the payments aren't getting out to people fast enough by any stretch. And we did a survey that showed that only around 9% of people have savings to last three months and the payments are going out in June. And thirdly, um, they, they completely leave out anyone who operates as a limited company who's required to by clients uh, for risk purposes and pays themselves through dividends. So we zeroed in on these three points as an industry. And actually, that campaigning that we've done is starting to be heard by the Treasury Select Committee, who 
recently uh, wrote an open letter to Rishi Sunak. I, I saw a letter from Sadiq Khan over the weekend as well, really zeroing in on those three campaign points. But what we wanted to do as well is say, actually, you know, there are things that we can do. And we had this partnership with Truelair. We do provide uh, self-assessments, uh, self-assessment software for, uh, you know, 23,000 people already. And, uh, and so we took our technology um, and put it onto the web. It's currently in an app. And now with, with the help of Truelair, uh, as soon as Rishi Sunak turns around and says, you know, people can submit their 2019, 20 uh, self-assessment for the SEISS, we're ready to go to serve, you know, anything up to a few million uh, people immediately. So if that happens, we're ready to go. If it doesn't, we can save self-employed people at this difficult time a lot of uh, effort in submitting their self-assessments. Huge, absolutely huge. Thank you. Um, so this, as everybody has, has clearly shown, is a pivotal point in our in our industry. So, David, would you agree? Yeah, fundamentally, I mean, I think this is a, a critical phase. Um, arguably, the the brands that people sort of are left with in this period of time are going to be the ones that people really remember. Um, but it's been, I mean, it's been fa fascinating to see the sort of reaction of the community with the guys who are on the call now and many others who are really sort of springing to people's aid. But um, I mean, we've talked a lot about um, the fintech community really sort of springing to, into action in many different guises. But I mean, what do you guys think in terms of the the impact? Why why is why is fintech jumped forward so much in this? Is it a the fact we can because of the sort of technological advancements or do you think it's more of a mindset thing um francesco do you want to kind of kick us off with that one sure i think i think it's probably both like we we have a mindset of of being doers i i think like we have this bias toward action to not just like sit idle but we are master problem solver and i think like that that's the spirit of a founder that's the spirit of uh, every single team member that we, we we have on board, we see a problem, we get excited, we want to crack it and and and, and deliver something cool, and 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 that's what what we do. So I think th this is the spirit of the industry at large, um, and and this is what I hear from from many of you. And then there is the opportunity, and the opportunity is the fact that we are, let's say, playing with very powerful toys. Let, let, let uh, pass me this, this expression. Uh, we 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 are all um, in a in a very interesting um, um, place of the of the technology industry more more broadly, and 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 we are all building, enabling, helping uh, financial application, which is which is something that right now finds a, a huge fit into solving the economic crisis that I was was mentioning before. Uh, maybe I'm sure that there is another forum, another call with a bunch of maybe biologists and, and doctors, and, and they're all like hacking their way into the, the health crisis. But it, it, it's our role here to, to tackle the uh, financial economical crisis. And, and, and because we have the capabilities, we have the ingenuity, and we also have, I think like, this is a key point, we have the distribution. We have the means to actually reach uh, the, the um, the the uh, the people to reach the businesses that uh, need this kind of help and so that that is kind of like the perfect match uh, the the ingenuity and the opportunity of doing something and and I think there is a responsibility uh, of of recognizing what we can do uh, whether we can inspire broader action at government level and 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 partner. Uh, with 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 other companies, with the government, with with alliances, partnership uh, inside of our industry, and and deliver the solution in time, not just this very month, but in in the next couple of years, because that's the time frame that we are talking about. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting your point. I mean, everybody on the call is a is by nature an entrepreneur in terms of the company that they've kind of started. But I think in a, anything, when you start to see people put aside their own fears or their own problems. I mean, being an entrepreneur, everybody, uh, you're all running your own companies, right? So, I mean, Freddie, uh, you've got to be careful what tweets you get tagged into, right? You kind of get dragged into some interesting stuff. So, I mean, what, why did you, what, what compelled you to get into this now, Freddie? 
Yeah, I think a lot of what Francesco, uh, the sentiments that Francesco just shared, uh, I, I would echo uh, very strongly. You know, the, the the kind of doing culture. You know, we with this this project, we we turned something around in you know under forty eight hours with a group of people that that grew from two or three to fifty uh, in in the same time. Um, I'd probably add the the motivation of being stuck at home with nothing else to do and not allowed to go outside, just being maybe playing a small role as well. But but ultimately, you know, problem solving and uh, and 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 having the technology and the, these powerful tools to to get to the the bottom of um, you know the the issue. Also, it's kind of what we've all been preparing for, right? Like the it, it, in in a sense, you know, a lot of these problems that we're now seeing. You know, if you look at sea bills and and the, the 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 bottleneck that's taking place there it's because of legacy it's because of phone calls it's because of paperwork and every, everything that the people on this phone call and elsewhere are doing with open banking and other new technologies is around digitizing that and making it cost effective and and better for consumers and faster um and and so you know what we're seeing is it is a ra- rapid increase in demand for everything to be digital you know we we've just seen you know uh, guys like onfido raising these these fantastic uh, investment rounds and and in a time where you know previously uh, you know uh, the FCA for example has said that you know now you can you can do selfie verification you can do non wetting signatures on documents all this sort of stuff so the acceleration of of services that do that in a digital way is is you know it's just been been amped up and and we're using that uh, that platform that we've all built in preparation for that to to execute solutions that that really quickly solve these problems with minds as as Francesco describes that are that are in problem solving mode. I mean, I completely agree with that. I mean, Nigel, I mean, you guys have been, I mean, busy sort of signing paperwork to, to sort of land your uh, land your funding round and whatnot. So what sort of compelled you to sort of get involved to, to try and help solve some of these problems? Uh, it's a good question. It's, it's interesting, the paperwork thing, because uh, they... Uh, the paperwork needs to be signed by deed and there's to be witnessed and just as witnessing needed to happen everybody was sent to lockdown in San Francisco <laughs> so it was, it was like lawyers all talking to figure that out uh, what, can, can, speak, you do a, can you do a deed signature signing over a Zoom call? Does that count? Like, uh, I'm sure you've figured that out over the last couple of days, right? I, I, I hid from the conversation. <laughs> let, <laughs> let, sort of out. Just asked me, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Um, it but it, it was, uh, they gave some leeway and signed some other paperwork that said, we will sort this out when we get to a point where we can sort it out. But uh, Which also shows that how even somebody like Visa can make change uh, in in a hard time as well because uh, they had to change their processes for that. But, but back to your question, uh, we we have a, a director of financial inclusion, which is a, a colleague, Ren, who, who, uh, who's based here in London but is Singaporean. And one of the mandates that we set Wells Bank on, 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 up on in the very early days was we believe in financial uh, finance and access to finance and financial services is a human right and not uh, a privilege. And that uh, we also catalyst as well. So we worked out how to get the economics of that to work. So uh, a bank account normally costs you about 10, uh, sort of 10 to 25 bucks to run if you're a normal bank with a balance sheet. With us, it costs you between 5, 10 cents to a month to run. And once you do that, you can create uh, 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 tool, you can create a market and you can create facilities and you create an infrastructure for people to build interesting apps to get people included into the financial system because the economics work for everybody. It's why the telcos going into banking has never worked because the economics don't work. So that, that's what we changed. So we've always had a, a social mind behind us and uh, we'd set up in our growth team. Part of it is a, an inclusion mandate and we were working on one in Singapore and Philippines for foreign domestic workers there. There's 11 million in the Philippines and there's uh, 2 million in Singapore of how we can solve a, a bunch of the inc- financial inclusion pieces there because the banks really don't want them. And we were working on that just as lockdown came and Ren said was in discussions uh, within local community in Southwark and was able to uh, say, well, we'll apply the same stuff we were working on uh, immediately now. Uh, so we, we were sort of uh, by luck, not by, I'd love to say, we thought this all through <laughs> two years ago and it was in our 
business plan and everything, but to respond to it. And we have the, the, we recruit people with that mindset into the company. It's by the core values uh, that we look to when we recruit people. So that that that's where it came from. It came from we were doing something already. This accelerated it, uh, and and they just knuckled down. Uh, the actual whole thing was built in four days over uh, essentially a long, a long weekend. And the rest of the other ones were tidying up and getting working again. Apple to agree with it, and they put a ton I mean, of energy a, in. It, it's super interesting because you're. I mean, both what you're saying, what Freddie said. Uh, I mean, when you and, and actually to to echo uh, Francisco's point there, when you actually have the ability to do these things quickly, and a bunch of people who are passionate about really solving these problems, uh, things amazing things can happen so quickly. I mean, in a in a big banking organization, I think just getting this amount of people on a Zoom call would probably take <laughs> us about seven weeks to organize, wouldn't it? So, you know, it, it, it is an amazing thing. There's some really, really good questions kind of coming through on the uh, the Q&A. So I'm going to kind of jump to a few of those and, and sort of go through them because I think they really sort of adds to what we're saying here because arguably what we're sort of seeing here, um, unfortunately, um, the, the, um, the, the questions from uh, Anonymous, which is always like brace yourself for an anonymous question guys it's not going to be too bad but um um do you do you think that arguably uh the covid crisis is actually going to push uh open banking into the mainstream because arguably these problems have been there for for quite a long period of time but given the urgency that we now have to to fix these problems to really help individuals or really help businesses in this sense um Simon, probably put that one to you. I mean, lending has always been a problem, but when you might go out of business, if you don't get this money really quickly, then access to funds is more critical than ever, isn't it? Yep, absolutely agree with you 100%. So it's a great question. Uh, my immediate response is, yes, I do uh, believe that this is going to, I think, push open banking forward uh, significantly. And I you know, personally and, and on behalf of funding options, uh, I absolutely hope that's the case. Uh, for me, the piece that's missing is adoption across the board. So if you look at the number of lenders that will consume uh, open banking data digitally, you know, it's actually only a fraction of where it should be. Uh, without naming names and sort of shining too much of a negative light, shall we say, on, on the Seabill scheme, but there's there are lenders accredited to that scheme who are only lending to their own customers. And one of the excuses they give is, well, we couldn't possibly lend to anybody else's customers because we can't see their bank transaction information, which sort of makes a mockery of what's available there via um, open banking. So, you know, I'm being a little bit uh, pointed there, but, but the principle uh, absolutely uh, is there. Um, the more adoption of open banking there is across the market, then I think the greater uh, efficiency, the greater success, um, you know, it, it can only improve things. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what, what do you think, Todd? Do you think um, the arguably the uh, COVID crisis, you know, inadvertently makes open banking a lot more mainstream at this stage in terms of the the use uses of it? Uh, yeah, I, I do think so. I mean, I think this is a huge opportunity for open banking. You know, on our prep call, I had called it the defining moment for uh, for open banking. And the reason is we all know there's a lot of critics out there that are stating that open banking is yet to fulfill the hype um, that we've been hearing for three years. So this is the opportunity to demonstrate how quickly we can mobilize and we can demonstrate the, the, the true benefits of how open banking can improve efficiency um, to help in these processes and can reduce cost. So no, and I, I and you know while some of us on this call are competitors, I think this is a chance for us to really cheer each other's successes. So this is about waving the flag for open banking right now because I think this will finally demonstrate tangible uh, results and, and fulfill some of the the hype that had been projected. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. I mean, what what do you think, Sam? Do you think? Um, I mean, we we sort of joked, didn't we, earlier on uh, earlier on this week, saying we should probably go through this whole thing and not say open banking just because actually it's so much about the use cases. It's so much about the problems that we're solving. You're solving real problems for consumers in this period. Um, you know, do you think open banking really just starts to be, uh, it's not about what you're doing. It's the way that you're doing it. And the way doesn't matter in this instance. It's just the fact that you're solving real customer problems. I think that's right. I mean, to, to get customers using a, a product in the first place, um, you need to solve a pretty acute pain point. And to get people sharing their banking data readily with a, with a third party, you need to do that too. 
Um, I think that this has created a, a world in which almost, uh, particularly in banking and government, where the sort of pieces have been thrown up in the air a bit. And when they land, they might land in a different configuration. Um, and you may get a situation where actually the government starts using open banking more effectively or encouraging you know, lenders to use open banking more effectively because they realize the power of that. And all of that will create a, 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 a positive force towards actually increasing the, the awareness of, of it and the acceptance of, uh, of it as a, a solution to many problems. Mm. I mean, look, the, the reality of the situation is we're in a uh, we're in a privileged place, given, like you say, the technological advancements that, you know, people like yourself, Nigel, have, have got, you know, many, many places in the world right now are, are trying to roll uh, COBOL developers out of, requ- uh, of retirement, right, to uh, get those guys kind of fixing different systems. But I mean, is it because of the technology that you guys have put in place? Do you think, Nigel, that's allowing you to do these things so quickly? I, th- I think it's the, the difference between being digital and being digitized. And uh, I'll use a classic example in Philippines and Indonesia. I was on a, a panel like this talking about it, and I didn't use the OB word ever. You notice I've never used it in, uh, today. Uh, is uh, there? There is sixty uh, percent of the banks have shut the doors because they can only do stuff through branch, and because legislation coming back to a point earlier has said you need a wet signature and you have to have physical presence uh, for verification. Philippine government and uh, Indonesian government is about to change, literally changing the law at the moment to allow digital uh, identity. Which is, this is a great outcome of uh, COVID. It's forced a few issues. So, and the reason is they were so, they had a website, they had processes that were online and things and then realized they were a total bricks and mortar business that had been digitized. Uh, they hadn't actually become a digital business. And I think all of us here, we're digital natives, uh, to coin uh, an Antimus phrase, which uh, I know truly I investors and I used to be uh, invested in them. Uh, and the the key thing, which you'll know, it's, it, it, talking about this concept of digital native back in the, sort of 2005 or so, was uh, it allows you to be independent. And like Rails Bank, we... we Everybody was sent home uh, and customers were never affected. And we're still clearing with the Bank of England every day. We're still clearing on Swift every day. And all our security stuff and everything else like that was able to go home. And then uh, pretty much every other bank, which thought they were they, were, they, they were, they used digital stuff, realized they've still got to go in. They've still got to turn up there because they still rely on physical and stuff. So what are all of us are an advantage of uh, uh, stuff. We, we're, we're all digital native people. And the other part we have, which has come up time and time, everybody on the call here, we're all empowered uh, because we're in charge. Uh, and we all d- probably don't work for big companies because we'd never be employed because <laughs> we create crazy change and, and things. So I think combination of that is uh, is really helped to make the change. It's just we we are, we 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 built you know, architecture, infrastructure, and everything that is truly digital as opposed to digitized. Completely agree with that. I think uh, the digitized world gets you only so. And, and, uh, and actually being in a situation where you really get to the point where you can take it further than that and really the, the virtues of digital are so much more, aren't they? Um, a really um, a really great comment here by uh, Paul Loberman over the, on the question. So great initiatives from everybody. Now that these solutions are ready to go, how can the great community help raise awareness uh, outside of just the, the fintech bubble that we've got? Um, what is the uh, opportunity, do you think, to get these solutions really into the hands of those that really need it? I mean, maybe uh, maybe if I go, Freddie, to, to you on that one, because, I mean, having the good idea and getting it out there, getting it made. Um, but these are things that arguably the more people know about them, the better the outcome is going to be for more people, isn't it? So what, what can we do as a community, do you think, to accelerate the, the benefit that we can drive to consumers? I think from our perspective and, and through what I've seen from the project that we embarked on was that um, going through government and going through uh, regulators was that uh, there was a very strong and welcoming reception and, and uh, I mean we, we've always said you know our, our regulator the FCA has been you know very very innovation focused and, and very supportive and that you know has continued to be true over the past few weeks I mean they've, they've been like very on it in, in all senses with what's been going on with coronavirus and making adjustments like the ones I mentioned earlier 
Um, and I think, um, you know, when we took forward the, the COVID credit project, you know, there was a very much a, how do we get started? When can we do this? You know, for, for us, it was, you know, how do we quickly regulate a, a new entity to, to be a, uh, an open banking uh, provider? How do we, you know, test this out? Can we do a, a really quick regulatory sandbox or whatever is required? And, and, and so all of that was, you know, offered from from day one and, and similarly with with hmrc you know that obviously that they don't set the policy that they, they sort of enact it and, and so you know the, the technical team there were very very aware of the you know the capabilities that we built and how they could could leverage them um so from us it was you know the the routes through policy makers and through government were, were very open and I, I know i'm sure plenty of people on this call have, have had the same experience i've been on a ton of calls for the past few weeks that where you know it seems like decisions are being made you know pretty quickly uh, to make you know pretty big changes and to involve and, and use um, some of this technology as quickly as possible. So f from our perspective, you know, it's you know, open banking. It, you know, I've said it again, but open banking is, is you know the um, you know the, the kind of underlying theme here, and and um, you know this is an absolutely great way to 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 kind of get it in front of people, and and uh, you know we want to be talking about the use case, and 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 I think for us, it's going through government and, and enabling something that they can provide to people for others, it, it might be different. Definitely. I mean, like say, having the having the innovative idea is one thing, but getting it built and getting the distribution is another. And I think, like you say, with the Bank of England and the FCA, we're pretty lucky to have people who um, take on board uh, suggestions pretty quickly, don't they? I mean, Todd, what, what do you think? What's um, what's sort of missing from this equation? We seem to have uh, lots of people with lots of problems and we have lots of good solutions now with uh, the community really sort of pulling together. But um do you think it's uh, it's something more that we could be doing to really have the impact that we want to have? Well, I, I think to what that, that previous question about how to raise awareness, you know, I think in addition to uh, providing technology, obviously we all try to provide best practices and advice. So, you know, whenever we deploy a, a new way to accept the payments through bank payments, you know, we do education of that, of that customer on how they need to educate their their consumers. And for the charities, it's as simple as, you know, pay from your bank account, save us money. Um, and how do you really educate the consumer of the benefits of that? So how do we take this forward as, as, uh, as, as an industry? Um, you know, we all play a certain part. You know, token is plumbing. Uh, there are others that are applications. You know, I, I think we all need to look for opportunities to, to partner up. Um, you know, the, the true layer in coconut is a, is a tremendous example. Um, token is partnering with a money dashboard to make it easier for consumers to manage their money and sweep funds from with one application. Uh, with Rails Bank and Nigel and Finastra, we're kind of launching an appathon to help de developers more rapidly develop new, new apps and use cases. So I, I think it is about realizing we can make a big impact on the industry right now. With success, we're going to be able to knock down a lot of the barriers that are still inhibiting all of our successes, and we're going to be able to make some, some big changes. And, um, you know, none of us can do that individually. We got to kind of pair up uh, as and when appropriate. Completely agree. I mean, Simon, what do you think? I mean, open banking is the, the sort of backdrop to all of this, isn't it, in terms of uh, the solutions that are being provided? But, uh, you know, solutions that are needed very quickly. What, what more do you think we can do at this stage? So there's a lot of initiatives uh, that are being um, well, that are in the offing and, and have been for for some time. I think the critical thing is that we come together in as unified a fashion as we possibly can. So there's uh, sort of industry bodies. If you look, if you think of the likes of Innovate Finance with Charlotte, the work that she's been doing with a consortium of lenders, for example, uh, Enterprise Nation. You know, there's a number of industry recognized bodies who are uh, really trying to push the the overall voice uh, to the powers that be i think that is absolutely the the right approach um it would be remiss of me if i said that i i i, I think that the voice hasn't yet been heard right so so realistically if you look at where the uk is versus for example where the us is you know, 4,664 lenders involved in a mass push of lending to SMEs. More than a million loans uh, have been issued in the US in a shorter space of time <clears throat> than, 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 than we've had in the UK to do the same thing. We've not achieved even a fraction of those numbers. So um, I think we just need to be persistent. We need to be creative, but collectively is the key. Um, outside of that, David, I think we need to put you into politics. Uh, get you right up to the higher echelons and then maybe we, we have a chance. 
I think they made me put a suit on, mate, so I'm probably not up for that one. I mean, Helen, probably back to you at this point, because I, I think the, um, I mean, there's definite um, agreement here is people are just solving real problems, right? We're, we're trying to solve real problems for consumers. And actually, the, the open banking element of this really is the backdrop to it. But the foreground is actually real businesses, real customers who have got real problems during this period. So um, probably back to you at this stage to, to wrap up. Thank you, David. You've really delved into some of the use cases there. Absolutely superb. I mean, what we've seen is that COVID-19 has galvanized many of us into action and literally everyone to a man on, on this call has talked around collaboration. So, so my question, and it really was the question that um, we, we've got as, as our, um, on, on the poll during this session, is that though the response has been amazing, it maybe has been a little bit fractured. So it's a pivotal moment and to use Todd's expression around making open banking um, a, a it, it, to be defined um, right now, what can we do to collaborate and, and come together to do to sort of join the dots a little more? Simon, please, you know, help me out here. What do you think we should do to join these dots? So I think from uh, from a, a cross industry perspective, you know, I, I think the panel on here, you know, there's a number of exceptional people and exceptional companies represented. Um, you know, I would like to see us come together um, and, and sort of drive almost like a working group type approach uh, for the UK and, and potentially beyond, you know, set the example for the globe, but come together in some kind of sort of working group fashion to continue to push the agenda. Uh, I've talked about uh, the need for there to be a, a unified voice rather than that fragmented approach, and that's absolutely critical. Um, you know, we're very, very committed to this. And I think this is a unique once in a generation opportunity for, uh, for the government predominantly and other industry bodies to really push the agenda for open banking. And I think that will set the, the, the stage for the UK um, to be very much leading in that capacity. And as they said in the liftoff report, we are creating the blueprint for open banking. So that is just aligned with what you've said. David, I would like to ask you a question as you very generously have uh, been my co-host um, during this session. What do you think we should do as an industry to join the dots, please? Um, I, I think, if I'm honest with you, I think it's continually doing things like we're doing now. I mean, how can we keep shining a light on areas where people are doing amazing things? I mean, open banking for me gives you... Um, the Lego blocks, but doesn't necessarily tell you what to what to build with them. So, being in a situation where we're really surfacing major consumer or business problems, and then being in a situation where we can help people shine a light on the solutions that they're creating, um, that's what good community is for me. Thank you, and and I would agree. Um, Francesco, in our briefing call, we, we talked around um, a working group, which is Simon has, has touched on now, and you had some amazing ideas. I would just like to, uh, to shine a light on, to use that expression again, around governance and what that could look like. Would you like to share them, please? Sure. Um, I think what, one, of the, one of the greatest things that happened uh, in, in FinTech here in the UK is actually that we, we as an industry often organize ourselves around working groups and, and we put in place governance. Uh, I, I have to say that for instance in Europe, we are in, in quite deep in a number of other um, uh, working groups and, and organization all over Europe and, and they are far behind the level of organization that we actually have here in the UK. Uh, OBIE is actually a good example of that with all the critics, all the, all the limits, but it, it's still, uh, Quite, quite ahead of the game compared to other countries. So I think that that should be probably the spirit of trying to create a little bit of governance around what uh, sort of technologies, what sorts of initiatives can move the needle. It may not be solely open banking. It can be a number of other things um, built together, uh, um, merged together uh, that can deliver this source of uh, help in a, in a time where it's very needed. And, and I think right, right now, if, if you compare this crisis versus uh, 2008, I think FinTech at that point in time was a very small part. It was, the, it was uh, effectively the response that, that spun up uh, out of that crisis. Here, FinTech is, is not anymore um, a, a small bubble, but it's actually a quite... Uh, large force uh, 
and 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 we have quite some power of of reaching out business and consumers. Therefore, we we have to be sensible. We need to put in place a structure, governance, organization that can help can can coordinate larger efforts. And and then I'm very practical. I I think that from an open banking perspective. Um, we need to double down. Like we, we can't just say, okay, it's done. Uh, we have all the capabilities that we need and, and the story is over. I think we, we all know that we, we can further help consumers when we progress with a, an open finance kind of agenda. And so let's, let's push on that. Let's make sure that the banks are not um, um, stonewalling this kind of conversation now because there is COVID as an excuse. Actually, on the, on the contrary, I think like we should double down. We should have the, the industry bodies helping us and, and, and forcing the banks into the right direction. Uh, same thing on payments. We all know that VRP, variable recurring payment, is, is maybe the holy grail of open banking, something that can help save businesses an, a, an obscene amount of money. And, and, and this is the best time to roll out something like this. So, so I, I think we have the ideas, we have even the industry bodies already in place. So it's just like about doing things, really. Good point, well made. And let's see if we can get some of that um, doing into a, a working group as, as Simon suggested. Todd, um, I'd like you to sort of wrap up this bit and, and close in terms of what we can do collectively as a community. And that's where the power and the strength is to, to make this a defining moment. Well, I think what's been described here, um, you know, partner up to bring solutions, you know, take action to solve these real problems, realize that we're probably solving a real problem for the world, but we're also advancing our industry. And, uh, and I do like the suggestions here about not letting this end at the end of this crisis. Um, you know, how do we take this forward in, uh, in an ongoing work, working group structure um, um, uh, and, and others? So, um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, when I look at the questions that are coming in, um, what we're going to do is we're going to digest them and, and come back with, with some of um, more of the answers. And we'll be sharing that on, on LinkedIn. I think that's probably the best way in, in terms of time. And all I would say is that we believe when you get good people together, uh, amazing things have happened. And, and I think that we, we've shown this during this session. So thank you. So I would like to, to wrap up and, and in doing so to thank all of our panelists, our OBE heroes, and it's been an absolute pleasure to shine a light on um, the good that you and your teams are doing. So a huge thank you. And maybe there's a virtual ripple of applause going around, uh, around, around the world. And we have had people literally, um, it's been amazing when you see the different countries that have, that have tuned in right now. Um, and finally, for those of us in the UK, I mean, if you ask time, we're all going to be stood in our drives and, and clapping for some other heroes, those heroes in the NHS. So if you're anything like me, you will be clapping until your hands absolutely throb. So all that remains for me now to say is thank you, a huge thank you from Tatiana and I for tuning in and to wish you and uh, your loved ones the very, very best of health. Thank you, David. Thank you, panel. Um, the best of health and goodbye. Thank you, Helen.